hello and welcome to another exciting Unity tutorial with me Romy Fauzi. And in this video, we are going to create a point and click mechanics where we can click on a certain position on our screen and our character will move to that position. So this is what we are going to create. And as you can see, if I click, we have this indicator and the character will move. So let's start creating this. So I've imported a couple of assets here and I'm going to put the link in the description below. And this is already asset. This is for the character that I'm going to use in this series. And this is for the animation. And another thing that we need to import is the Playmaker Pathfinding package. So in order to do that, we can just go to the add-ons menu here, open the ecosystem, open ecosystem browser, and then search for NavMesh. And now once the result is shown, we can just select this one here, this package, and then press get. And it will download all the actions that we need to create this tutorial so I'm going to import this and here as you can see in the scene I have an environment a ground and a box here and I put this under an empty game object this step is optional though you don't need to put in an empty game object but you need to tag all of this game object as a navigation static so I'm going to select the parent game object here and I'm going to press this button here and then I'm going to set the navigation static and then I'm going to apply to the children Okay, so now we have all of the object marked as navigation static for our environment. We can open the navigation tab here. And if you don't have it, you can go to the window under the AI, you can open the navigation. And here I'm going to press bake. And we are going to bake the area where our agent can walk around. So here, as you can see, once we finish the bake, we will see this blue mesh if we open the navigation mesh window here. You'll see the blue mesh and this blue mesh is actually the area that our agent can walk around. And the one that doesn't have the blue mesh here, then our agent will avoid this and then go way around it. But if we open the inspector window here, you see that the navigation mesh gets hidden. Okay, I'm going to save the scene here. And the next thing that we need to do, I'm going to import the character. So I'm going to open this here. And here inside, we want to make sure that the models are set to mechanism or the rig as humanoid. So we can just go to the models folder under the cop FBX here. We can go to the rig and then make sure the animation type sets to humanoid. By default, it's going to be set to generic and you need to change this to humanoid and then press apply. And go to the prefabs, I'm going to drag the cop object here. And now we have this cop game object and I'm going to open the prefab and make sure that the rifle and the donut are hidden because by default it is shown. So I hit it and I'm going to unpack this. So we won't get the annoying message that we are modifying the prefab inside the playmaker window later. And I'm going to add a navigation mesh agent component here. And I'm going to set the radius to 0 0.4. And I'm going to set the speed to 3 and the angular speed to 360. And yeah, this is all the modification that we need to do. And this you can change this to your liking depending on the style. Okay, so now with the cop selected, let's create a new FSM. I'm going to add a new FSM here. And inside the start state here, I'm going to add a get mouse button down. And I'm going to create a new state and I'm going to add a transition system event. I'm going to pick mouse down and here I'm going to send the event mouse down when we press the left button mouse and then connect this to the second state. And here under the second state, I'm going to use the mouse pick event. And this is basically for picking our mouse click and it can get the information of array casted by the mouse position in screen space via camera into the world space. And this array will store various information such as did it hit an object, the game object it hits, the hit position, and some other useful information. And here I'm going to assign the store did pick object to a new boolean. So I'm going to call this hit something with question mark. And for the position, I'm going to call this target destination and then we want to test the boolean so I'm going to use the bool test here and I'm going to check the boolean variable hit something and if it's true then we want to go to another state and if it's false then we want to go back to the first state so I'm going to add an event called move 
and here I'm going to add the transition move and also transition finish and under our bull test here I'm going to set if the boolean is true then I'm going to go to the move event and if it's false then I'm going to go back to finish and here let's add a new state and connect the move transition to this newly created state and connect the finish back to the first state and here we want to add the agent related action so if we clear this search area and if we successfully import the nav mesh package you'll see that we have this nav mesh and nav mesh agent and we want to open the nav mesh agent and you'll see that we have a lot of new actions regarding the agent uh, component and basically what we want to do here we want to set the destination so i'm going to use the set destination here and then i'm going to set the destination to the target destination that we've created in the previous state and add a finish transition and then we want to connect the finish transition back to the first state so basically the state will set the destination and the agent will start to move but we need to trigger the animation okay so now if we go to the project folder here uh, I've already prepared animation controller so basically I'm going to drag this controller to our cup animator component here and basically inside this animator I've only create a blend tree here idle and walk and inside the blend tree I've created one dimensional blend type and pick the idle animation and the walk animation and this animation gets triggered based on the speed value here so if I press play here and as you can see here if we set the speed to 0 it will play the idle animation and if we set this speed to 1 it will play the walking animation okay so this is the basic setup for the animator controller for this example and let's select the cup again and let's go to the playmaker window here and here inside the first state we want to add the get agent velocity and here we want to store the square magnitude so I'm going to create a new variable and let's just call this speed and we want to use square magnitude because this is more performant uh, because it doesn't have a square root operation compared to the velocity magnitude and for the velocity magnitude we have a square root calculation here so basically it's it is more taxing to the CPU this is a small optimization but it's it works fine using the square magnitude so I'm going to use the square magnitude and I'm going to enable every frame and then I'm going to use the set animator float and here I'm going to put the animator float on top the get mouse button and for the parameter here under the animator you see that we have this parameter so I'm going to trigger this parameter so we can just type speed with the correct capitalization and for the value I'm going to pass the speed value here that we've got it from the get agent velocity so let's just use variable and then grab the speed value and then also check every frame okay I'm going to save the scene now and now let's give it a try if we press play you see that we can click and then the character will go to that position here we can click over here and then it will it will walk to that position yeah we can click anywhere that has enough mesh area but for the whole area it will walk around the obstacles and now let's make this mechanics a bit interesting we can create a new particle to indicate our mouse click so I'm going to create a new particle system here and I'm going to set the value to zero on all of the axis and move it to the side so it's easier for us to set up and we want to set the emission to zero here but we want to set using the burst emission so I'm going to set the burst emission and I'm going to set this to one and then I'm going to set the start speed to zero so it doesn't move and for the shape I'm going to set this to box here and I'm going to set the scale to zero and another thing that I want to do is I want to go to the render panel here and set the render mode to horizontal billboard so we have the particle facing the ground and uh, I've created a material here using this texture for the particle basically I just tinted the material to green here using the particle standard unlit 
And for the particle system here, I'm going to directly target material to our material slot. And now we have this. And I'm going to also add a rotation over lifetime so it rotates. And also color over lifetime so it fades. Here, under the gradient editor, I'm going to create a new point for color here for the alpha value. This top area is the alpha value and this is for the color value. And for the starting alpha, I'm going to set this to 0. And also for the last alpha, I'm going to set this also to 0 so it fades. And then I'm going to set the lifetime to around 2 and a half second. And we can just set also the duration to 2 and a half second. And then we want to disable the looping here and also disable the play on awake. So it won't play the particle. Okay, so now if we press play, you see that we have a nice fading particle. And as you can see, we have this uh, clipping effect because the particles are very close to the floor. So if we increase the position on the Y to 0 0.1, you see that the particle will render nicely. Okay, so now we have this particle. I'm going to call this indicator or move indicator. And then go back to the playmaker, select the cup game object. And now whenever we click here, we want to play the particle. So I'm going to set position for the particle game object. And for the game object, let's just specify game object and then drag the move indicator. And for the position, we can just use the target destination vector. But we want to override the Y value. So I'm going to uncheck this use variable. And then set the Y value to 0 0.1, so it will be slightly above of our ground. And for the space, let's set this to world, and we don't need to check the other option here. And the next thing that we want to add is a call method action. And basically, we want to call the play method for the particle system here. So in order to do this, we can just drag the particle to the state here, and then we can go to the particle system and then script control, we can just use the call method. And here we can call the, inher uh, sorry, not the inherited, but here we have the void play. So I'm going to run the void play here and it will play the particle. And as you can see, since our particle is not looping, then it will play one time and then after it dies down, it will fade away. Another thing that we need to change here, under the cup here, the particle related action should be above the bull test here. So I'm going to select both of this action here and then drag this to be on top of the bull test. Otherwise, it won't get executed. Okay, let's save the scene and now let's test this. So now if we click on an area, you see that we play particle on that area and then it will show where the character will go. So this is a nice way to create an indicator of the click indicator. So yeah, that will be all for today's tutorial. I hope you like this video and if you like it, hit that like button and also press that subscribe button. Don't forget the notification button so you will receive notification from me if I upload a new video. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.